it's Michelle and Olive. I don't know, you probably can't see her, but she's down here with me. We are here to talk to you about our most anticipated book releases of October and November. <sighs> Fall is a time when I get so excited about books and she loves to cuddle with me on the couch when I read. So this will be a really fun season for us both since it'll be our first fall together. These books come out in October and I feel like the release dates of books keep kind of changing by a week or two so I'm just gonna say what month they come out and if you're interested you can go ahead and check them out. I will put down in the description box each of the names of the books along with timestamps of when I'm talking about them in case you want to skip around. The Undertaker's Daughter by John James Minster this one is a horror novel. Anna Dingle, introverted and socially inept, raised in the family funeral home, turns 18 during summer break before senior year. Her interest in Timmy from class is requited when she discovers a music video of him performing a song composed about her. Her best friend, Naomi Silver, is consumed with validating the authenticity of Jewish scripture as the factual, unaltered history of her people. When Israeli archaeologists unearth an ancient stone fragment, on it a name missing for millennia, Naomi celebrates by treating Anna to an extensive makeover. Once mousy and plain, now transformed, Anna breaks away to see Timmy's band perform live where the leader of a bad school cabal attempts to assault Anna in the parking lot and gets arrested. Released from jail, so begins an ever-widening maelstrom of cruel retribution, turning Anna and Timmy's summer of love into a nightmare, meaning only to frighten the bullies into peace. Anna and Naomi experiment with the recently revealed old Jewish magic at the end of the persecution inserting the long missing name, the ancient Abrahamic ritual works, though not as expected. As Timmy's high school music career appears professionally promising, the eldritch power Anna has unleashed with the singular objective of protecting herself takes dark and unexpected turns, endangers those she loves, and forces her to decide who she is and wants to be. A story of love, forgiveness, consequences of choices, and exceedingly creepy, supernatural, violent horror. Fast paced with surprise twists throughout as children learn not to play with dead things. Marmy by Sarah Miller. This one's a historical fiction. This one is about my favorite character from one of my favorite books of all time, Little Women. It's a retelling of her perspective. A stunning portrait of the paragon of virtue known as Marmy. <laughs> you want attention so bad. Okay, I'm sorry. A wife left behind, a mother pushed to the brink, a woman with secrets. Secrets? Wait, what? sounds so good. Hester by Lori Legal Abenese. This is also a historical fiction. A vivid reimagining of the woman who inspired Hester Prynne, the tragic heroine of Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter, and a journey into the enduring legacy of New England's witchcraft trials. Ooh, and right in the fall. Oh gosh, I just... Ah. In this sensuous and hypnotizing tale, a young immigrant woman grapples with our country's complicated past and learns that America's ideas of freedom and liberty often fall short of their promise. Interwoven with Isabel and Nathaniel's story is a vivid interrogation of who gets to be a real American in the first half of the 19th century. A depiction of the early days of the Underground Railroad in New England and atmospheric interstitials that capture the long history of unusual women being accused of witchcraft. 
meticulously researched yet evocatively imagined. Hester is a timeless tale of art, ambition, and desire that examines the roots of female creative power and the men who try to shut it down. The next one is a cozy mystery, uh, Blackmail and Babinka by Mia P. Manansala. This is number three in Atita Rosie's Kitchen Mystery series. Um, I still need to read number two, which is Homicide and Holo Holo, but I absolutely loved Arsenic and Adobo. It's Christmas time in Shady Palms, but things are far from jolly for Lila. Sure, her new business, the Bruja Cafe, is looking to turn a profit in its first year. And yes, she's taken the first step in a new romance. But her cousin Ronnie is back in town after ghosting the family 15 years ago, claiming that he's back on his feet and ready to contribute to the Shady Palms community. Tita Rosie is thrilled with the return of her prodigal son, but Lila knows that wherever Ronnie goes, trouble follows. She's soon proven right when Ronnie is suspected of murder, and Lila has to put away years of resentment and distrust to prove her cousin's innocence. He may be a jerk, but he's still family, and there's no way her flesh and blood could actually be a murderer, right? Oh, you're being so good. <laughs> She's sitting on my feet. Just being sweet as could be, huh? Yeah. Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison. This one is a horror fantasy, and it's from the author of Cackle, which I actually have on my TBR shelf for this season. So I don't know if I'll get to both, but it'd be nice if I did, right? What do you think? Gosh, you're so cute. You're so cute. Love you. <laughs> Rory Morris isn't thrilled to be moving back to her hometown, even if it's temporary. There are bad memories there, but her twin sister Scarlett is pregnant, estranged from the baby's father, and needs support. So Rory returns to the place she thought she'd put in her rear view. After a night out at a bar where she runs into an old almost flame, she hits a large animal with her car. And when she gets out to investigate, she's attacked. Rory survives miraculously, but life begins to look and feel different. She's unnaturally strong with an aversion to silver. And suddenly the moon has her in its thrall. She's changing into someone else something else, maybe even a monster. But does that mean she's putting those close to her in danger? Or is embracing the wildness inside her the key to acceptance? This darkly comedic love story is a brilliantly layered portrait of trauma, rage, and vulnerability. Dark Room Etiquette by Robin Rowe. This one is a YA thriller. 16-year-old Sayers Wait has everything until he's kidnapped by a man who tells him the privileged life he's been living is based on a lie. The Animal by Chad Nichols. This one is a horror slasher. And this one is by the author of Shade, which was super scary. One night, 17 people were mysteriously slaughtered in their homes. Riley, an eight-year-old girl, was the only survivor. She saw its true face. Now, 25 years later, it's happening again. A young girl is attacked in her home, forced to watch as her friends are slaughtered by a monster wearing a wolf mask. But what if it wasn't a mask? As the body count begins to rise and the predator grows more violent, Riley is drawn back into the nightmare forced to confront the monster, surrounded by friends she can't trust and wolves she can't see. Clouds Without Water by Gary Harper. This one is a historical fiction. Not a soul wanders the streets. Businesses are boarded up. Farms have been sold. 
for the people of Calvary and hundreds of thousands more across the country. The end is near. Led by the apocalyptic prophecy of Reverend William Miller, the believers have spent the year preparing for Jesus Christ to return at sundown and bring about the rapture. All of his predictions have thus far come to pass, infallible as the Bible itself. Now, as the day approaches, William has mandated that his followers show their true dedication to the cause, no matter what the cost. Standing against him is a single widowed farmer, Henry Smith, who will do anything it takes to protect what remains of his family from the fanaticism that is overtaking their community. He knows that he just needs to push back until the prophecy is proven false and William's grip on the town is loosened. But when that day comes, will the madness truly stop? Or will Henry's world only just begin to come to an end? Based on the actual historical events of the Millerite movement and the Great Disappointment, Clouds Without Water offers a harrowing account of a society beset by mass hysteria and the lone voices that cry out to stop it. Doesn't that sound insane? And it actually happened? That's the crazy part, is so many of the books that I've talked about today are historical fiction books based on events that actually happened. And it's just crazy because people say you can't make that up. Yeah, no kidding. Some of the things that have happened in our world, I don't know that we could make up. They are just so crazy. <laughs> November. The Homicidal Hairstyle of the Viral Video Vixen by Philip Mottas. This one is a cozy mystery. It's the second book in a series. The first one was called The Murderous Haircut of the Mayor of Bel Air. And that was one of my favorite books of 2021. I gave it five stars. I loved it. The protagonist is a woman named Danica and she is amazing. She is very human. She's very flawed and funny and I just adored her and I've been waiting ever since for this next book to come out because I want to know what happens to Danica next. Danica is a psychic in the way that if she touches the back of someone's head, she can see what's going on in their mind. She can see pictures of it. She is a hairstylist, so she sometimes sees things that bring into question what's really going on with someone. And in this book, she sees a distressing vision about viral sensation Sophie Starr, the web celeb that goes missing. Her only chance to join the search party and secure a substantial reward is to collaborate with her worst enemy, the tarot card reading, crystal ball gazing, psychic, Madame Lorena. With just three days to forage for clues in Sophie Starr's strange house, Danica must navigate bitter infighting, fake friendships, overprotective superfans, and first-time sleuths with more enthusiasm than brains. The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. This one's a mystery fantasy. When Anne Stilwell arrives in New York City, she expects to spend her summer working as a curatorial associate at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Instead, she finds herself assigned to the Cloisters, a Gothic museum and garden renowned for its medieval art collection and its group of enigmatic researchers studying the history of divination. Desperate to escape her painful past, Anne is happy to indulge the researchers more outlandish theories about the history of fortune telling. But what begins as academic curiosity quickly turns into obsession when Anne discovers a hidden 15th century deck of tarot cards that might hold the key to predicting the future. When the dangerous game of power, seduction, and ambition at the cloisters turns deadly, Anne becomes locked in a race for answers as the line between the arcane and the modern blurs. Secluded Cabin Sleeps Six by Lisa Unger. This one is a thriller mystery. What could be more restful, more restorative, 
than a weekend getaway with family and friends. An isolated luxury cabin in the woods, complete with spectacular views, a hot tub, and a personal chef. Hannah's loving and generous tech mogul brother found the listing online. The reviews are stellar. It's his birthday gift to Hannah and includes their spouses and another couple. The six friends need this trip with good food, good company, and lots of R&R. &R. Far from the chatter and pressures of modern life. But the dreamy weekend is about to turn into a nightmare. A deadly storm is brewing. The rental host seems just a little too present. The personal chef reveals that their beautiful house has a spine-tingling history. And the friends have their own complicated past with secrets that run blood deep. How well does Hannah know her brother? Her own husband? Can she trust her best friend? And who is the new boyfriend crashing their party? Meanwhile, someone is determined to ruin the weekend, looking to exact a payback for deeds long buried. Who is the stranger among them? I think those books are always fun where there's a group of people off somewhere, like in a, in a, on an island, in an old hotel, in a cabin, and they can't leave, or they're, they're on vacation so they don't want to leave, and all kinds of spooky things start happening. I love that kind of stuff, where it's secluded. I think that's part of why I love living in a city. I don't want secluded. It's kind of creepy to me. So when I read books that are take place in a secluded area, it does, it, it creeps me out a lot more than books that happen in more populated areas. <laughs> a Quiet Life by Ethan Joella. This one is fiction. And doesn't this have a beautiful cover though? <sighs> in this beautifully crafted and profoundly moving novel, three parallel narratives converge in poignant and unexpected ways as each character bravely presses onward, trying to recover something they have lost. Emotionally riveting and infused with hope, a quiet life celebrates humanity in the midst of uncertainty. It just sounds so healing and soothing. It looks like a great book to read over a steamy mug of tea. And it comes out at the very end of November, I think. So it might be a really great book to get in the holiday spirit. Those are all of the new releases that I'm interested in for October and November. Let me know if you want to read any of them or if there's any I didn't mention that you're looking forward to. I know this list is a little bit different and unusual and kind of quirky, but so am I. <laughs> I did want to let you know that my vlog video about the Hoover Dam is up now on my main channel. If you want to take a look, you can click on this little box up here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night, and I hope that you're reading a book that you absolutely love right now. You can let me know what you're reading down in the comments, too, if you want. Bye.